Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Wow. That'll put some hair in your chest. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> That's delicious. It's a good mocktail. That is a mocktail and it's delicious. Well, this is the show where two friends who <laughs> you can't to get be over. money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today we are delivering a bit of a wake up call, Rachel. Yes, we are. Some yep. people need it. So let's do like a little like acting. Are you ready, George? Get in character. I don't know that I can play this. See if you woman. can deliver this well. Try okay. it. Try it. Try it. Oh my gosh, my earring's gone. It's seventy five thousand dollars. My diamond earring fell out in the ocean. Ken, there are people dying out there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a brilliant. Oscar worthy Courtney Kardashian. Is that good? Are you laughing at me? Are you laughing at me or with me? The dead tone you, you were able sure. to capture was just gospel your gorgeous. Kim, your Kim gospel Kardashian gorgeous. was pretty great. My Kim K was mediocre. At it best. was fine. I mean, it's a hard one. It was a hard one. You that was an egot right there. So yes, if you don't know the famous Kardashian scene, Kim lost her earring because her Second husband, Chris Humphreys, pushed her into the ocean in Bora Bora. She lost an earring. She really freaked out. And then Courtney was like, Kim, people are dying. <laughs> there are people dying. There are people dying. So, anyways. And gonna, then Rachel was like, they're so relatable. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've all been there. So, guys, all that to say, this episode, we're going to give some of you who we feel like are a little Kim Kardashian-esque in your attitude a wake-up call. So get ready. Yep. This is about people who by almost all stretches of the imagination are rich, are feeling poor. They yep. identify as poor, Rachel. Yes, That's so the new way, way gonna... to say it. Now, I know what some of y'all are thinking out there. How am I like anything, like a Kardashian and Bora Bora? Yeah. Well, it's the idea of the attitude of complaining about something that is just very nice, aka people's salaries that are upwards of $175,000 a year. But they're sad and complaining in life because they feel like they are poor. And here's the claim. stat. According to a recent study, a quarter of people making at least 175 k a year, which happens to be the amount you need to be in the top 10% of all tax filers, said they were either poor, very poor, or, quote, getting by, but things are tight. Yep. That's according to Bloomberg. And we understand geography plays into this. Like, there are certain things we get. But overall, Entitlement plays into this. You're still doing pretty great. So we're going to talk about it on this episode. Yeah. And no matter how much you make, I think there's a lot to be learned from this episode. Yes. So stick around. Stick around. George, what are we sipping on this episode? This is a mocktail and it's called the Citrus Smash. And I got to say, without giving too much away, this might be one of my top mocktails we've done on this it's show. It's really good. So stick around till the end if you want the rating, the review, and the recipe. We're going to be dishing it out. Yep. Okay, so George, we usually take a very compassionate route because um, we are a big believer at Ramsey that people matter and everyone's story is different. How people got to their situations are different. So we never want to shame people, guilt people. Like we try to bring hope. That's what we do on the side of the microphone is we want to bring hope to people regardless of your walk of life. We are here for you. Um, but sometimes, Rachel, but <laughs> tough love is all I got to give. It's the only kind of love you're getting from me. Oh, isn't that a J-Lo song? Nope. I think you're thinking of, <laughs> what? Because love don't do? cost a thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe there's a song out there called Tough Love. I don't know that J-Lo wrote it. I'm not sure J-Lo has ever actually written a song, <laughs> to be truthful. <laughs> that, that, that could there's be There's a hot fact. take. We're not sure about that. Yeah. So if you're making six figures and you feel like, I'm just getting by, we need to talk. Because inflation's real. But $175,000 a year is not poor. And here's the wildest result of this study, George. Uh, a share of people making more than 500000 up to a million reported feeling the same feelings of poor and, get ready for this, very poor. I just want to, I want to meet these people. I want to meet them. Where are they giving their money to? And what's funny is I'm like, you know, from the net worth standpoint, George, this isn't bragging, but this is just, these are your hosts. We have a net worth, you and I, of over a million dollars. We've yes. worked the baby steps, our net worth, including house and everything, equity, all of the things. So 
with that in play, like people that, and we don't make a million dollars a year. That's a very different thing. Yeah. Net worth of a million. Yeah. Net worth millionaire. A million a year. And these people in the study, some of them are making a million dollars a year and still feeling poor and very poor, which, well, my, uh, which mine, is kind of a slap in the face to a lot of people in America. To actual <laughs> poor people, for yes. starters, <laughs> let alone other countries, which America is vastly yep. more wealthy than every other country. Yes. So, okay, so let's, let's just give a definition, shall we, of... Is this, or, is this Webster's? Where are we pulling this from? Uh, that's a great question. Who knows? I only trust Webster's. Um, Merriam Webster's, to be exact. I think there was a marriage there. And there was like, a, I don't know. <laughs> of the dictionary? It used to be Web. Now it's Merriam-Webster's. Oh my gosh. So poor, according to this definition, is lacking sufficient money to cover basic needs such as food and shelter. I would agree. Yes. So from a census standpoint in the United States, poverty is measured by comparing a person's income or a family's income to a set poverty threshold. That's a minimum amount of income needed to cover that individual's basic needs. So the current poverty threshold for one for a household of one in America is $14,580. A family of four, it's about $30,000. So according to the U.S. Census Bureau, uh, they estimate in 2021, 37.9 million Americans live in poverty. Wow. Which translates to about 11.6% of the population. Does that surprise you? I feel like that's more than I thought. That is more. I mean, 37.9 so more than point, one I mean, out of 10 people are in poverty. Yeah, 38 million Americans. Oof. Yeah. That are considered that poverty line. That's serious. Yeah. And so one person household, 14580 one to a compared to a one person income of 175000 that is a far cry from actual poor poverty. Because in my definition. mind, if you say I'm poor, we're talking poverty level. That's right. Yes. Now you can joke about it of like, I'm broke, right? We all say that. Right. But this is actual poverty. True poverty. Yes. According to PewResearch.org, if you're making $175,000 a year with four people in your family in Nashville, Tennessee, you're considered upper class, along with 20% of this region's wow. population. So in Nashville, it's that. And I understand in San Francisco with, you know, living situations or um, Miami, New York, the standard of living is, is higher, right, than here in Nashville. But still, but still, $175,000. Thousand dollars, and that shows me. I'm like George. This is a clearly, clearly the definition of it's not an income problem; it's a you problem. And it's we talk not about an that issue; lot. it's an ish me. <gasps> you like that? Use that on Winston tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, you have to flip it to put it on. I Winston. was going to say you yeah. have to say it's not an ish me; it's an ish you. It's an ish. It's not. See an ish how me. he takes that. Sounds like I think he'll be so impressed that he just gives up. It sounds like ish. Me. I don't know. It sounds like a biblical Ishmael. Ishmael. <laughs> That's how I roll. So if this survey of people making 175 grand can teach regular people anything, it's that being rich and feeling rich are two very different things. So you don't need to make over 175 grand before you can be rich or feel rich. We did our millionaire study and we found that a third of millionaires, actual net worth millionaires, never made more than six figures in their life. Yes. I mean, under that. Absolutely. And that's what we believe at Ramsey all the time is like, regardless of what you make, your money habits are huge. So anyone from any walk of life can choose to say, hey, I'm going to put a set of principles in my life to win with money and and not spend everything I make, right? I mean, there's a part of investing and saving and all of that that you're like, yeah, regardless of what you make, getting to the point where you can do that to help yourself build wealth is is key. And we believe anyone can. We've talked to these people, George, at every yeah. income level. They've had every debt level, but people they've gotten out of debt. People make 35 grand. Yeah. They're able to get out of debt and invest for the it. future yes. and have a great life. That's right. Yet people who make 200 grand call us and they're in debt up to their eyeballs, yep. stressed out, and they can't build wealth. That's exactly right. Yep. It's so, backwards. Uh, we actually did a millionaire study and we found the five top careers for millionaires was engineer, teacher, accountant, management, and attorney. Wow. So some of these, I mean, especially teachers, I mean, they're making way under a hundred grand. So, and they're doing it. I mean, it's people with average jobs that are deciding, hey, I'm going to take control. That's why it's not an income problem. It's a you problem. Now, does the income help if you have great habits? Absolutely. Yes. It accelerates, right? But bad habits, good habits and a great income. It magnifies it. I mean, it's crazy. Well, so, think about teachers and engineers. These are people who they follow curriculums. They follow a process. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to impress people. Like teachers aren't driving into the high school in like 
crazy luxury SUVs trying to keep up with the other teachers. You know, they're just trying to get through the day. Right. <laughs> and so they don't have crazy lifestyles. And so they're just investing in their, you know, their pension plan, their, well, the te- ones their we retirement talk to, plan. I'm sure anyone. Sure. There's I, some balling teachers out there. Well, I'm just saying it, it is, you know, regardless if you're the engineer, the teacher or the salesperson, right? It's all about what you do with money. It is so much, so much about your habits. And and that's the positive thing and kind of the negative thing because it's a little scary. It keeps you accountable. Yeah. But I just want to encourage those out there who aren't making 175000 Yes. That you're like, well, if they feel poor, I feel even. You can be very much okay. You can have actually more of a net worth than those people making $175,000. That's true. That's a much they better have tons scoreboard. tons of car loans. They have tons of student loan debt, obviously, credit card debt. I mean, they are spending and going out. I mean, they're doing all this. They're probably living like they're making three hundred. dollars Right? Well, lifestyle creep is real. You make more money, you're going to spend more money. Yeah. And the more you make, the more people around you feel like, wow, you should be driving a nicer car. You should have a nicer house than that. Yes. So what do you do? You take on more debt and more debt, and it just compounds. Yep. Okay, so to really paint this picture, I want to play a game with you, George. Love but a game. before we do that, I want to tell you about a game that we love, which is Tapple. It's less than $20, and it's a game that you can play with two people, up to eight people, and it's so fun. So you're going to love it. And just go to Walmart or wherever you buy board games and start playing. And also, if you want to see how George and I play it, we'll add a link to the episode that we actually played it in. Hint, I do not play well. Rachel is is amazing. It's a great game, y'all. It's really fun. So make sure to check out Tapple. We love it. It's awesome. Good times. So good. Now to a much more amateur game that we invented, Rachel. <laughs> this is a budgeting game. Producer Lindsay is going to serve as our umpire. That's yes. what I think happens in sports. And explain Which the I'm game. Horrible at. So is that what umpires do? Go. I don't think they explain games, but mm, you're the no, umpire. No, and I don't even know what, a, what an umpire you're does. You're the head coach. Great. Calls the, calls the shots. Okay. <laughs> um, so here we go. You're the referee. This is a game of chance. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, George, in this game, you make an annual salary of $59,428. Okay, I'll take it. You need to remember that number. Which is currently the average salary in the U.S. according to research by Forbes. Okay. After removing your taxes, four walls, tithing, um, and the four walls include housing, utilities, transportation, groceries, in case anyone doesn't know that. Okay. Um Leaves you with one thousand one hundred dollars left in your budget. Let's get okay. our phones out. We're, we're gonna need our calculators. Okay. So the main so bills are paid. Out. Uncle Sam took his cut. Yeah, you have a, times, you have eleven hundred dollars left in your budget. Got okay, it. Rachel. In this okay. game, you make an annual salary of one hundred seventy five thousand dollars because this is oh, what people. I'm one of the say they, Yes, you're one I'm of the stats. This doesn't that feel, feel fair, poor. but okay. After removing your taxes, tithing, and four walls, you have thirty eight hundred dollars left in your. Okay, a lot more margin than I do, Rachel. Okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna see how this plays out, but. You have a pile of cards in that fishbowl, and there's a bunch of different random expenses in there. Okay. Okay? So you'll take turns drawing cards and subtracting whatever you pull out, like that number, that expense, from your mainly, like your remaining monthly budget. Uh, The first person to get to zero dollars left loses the game. Oh, so whoever runs out of money first is out. Yes. Wouldn't that obviously be me? We're gonna see, cause I mean, we're this trying to make a game, George. We're trying okay. to see, right? Because people are identifying as do I go first? Here. Yeah, we'll have you go first. So okay. you're gonna have to read it out loud, and then make sure you deduct. Here we go. Okay, uh, cleaning supplies, negative seventy five dollars. Okay. All right, I got a bottle of water at the airport, eight dollars. <laughs> Okay, make sure Hurtful because I would bring my own empty bottle and fill it, but okay, I'll go with it. <laughs> There's probably a lot of people who don't do that, so. Okay, I have a Netflix subscription of 20. Must be nice. You got the HD plan there. Uh, I have prescription medication for 150. I'm not doing well <laughs> already. But people have medications, George. That's true. Okay, uh, I was convinced to buy a new air filter. So 40, that's real life for negative you. Negative $40. Oh, that's relatable. Valvoline ne- side. The val- you need air, you need air Oh, filter. for your car? Oh, for the car. For the car. I you never fall for that. that. All right, I got it. You Go. know they're using a different filter to show you. It's not even yours. Oh, stop It's it. a scam. Conspiracy theory. Wendy's dinner? $30? You knew we had to throw that in there. I don't know that I would know how to spend $30 yes, at Wendy's. Yes, if you have a family... Yes. Rachel, didn't you say you spent thirty oh, yeah. something dollars? Yeah. Oh, easily. Thank yeah, you. yeah. It's not right. cheap anymore. All thirty right. bucks uh, at Wendy's. I've got a YMCA membership for a family of four with one hundred and twenty. All right. 
I've got a hair appointment, 150 bucks. Whoa, George. <laughs> I better get a perm for that. That sounds right with, you know, hygiene Daddy's homie getting over a perm. here. Daddy's getting a perm. <laughs> All right. I got kids tutoring for 250 Well, Charles has been struggling with math. <laughs> Now this I can get behind. I got a relaxing petty with foot massage, oh. 100 bucks. Clear coat or are you going a color? <laughs> I'm going clear coat, maybe French. Love it. We'll see. <laughs> All right, this is pretty fun. A last minute New York trip for my friend's birthday, a negative $600. Whoa. Yeah, that was like that was an expense. Bulk aluminum foil from Costco, $25. That sounds on par for Kirk I literally King. own that. So yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I have a car payment for a Hyundai Sonata 2017 for $350. i am clipping that part out to tell people Rachel Cruz has a car payment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I have a volcano candle from Anthro. Who doesn't Anthropology. love those? This is those really on par so for you, by the good. way. Yes. Those are the best candles. $35 for this, for this volcano candle. Was it worth it? Yes. <laughs> Are you ready for this one, George? Yep. An adjustable non-slip pet ramp. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to get for that $70. one. $70. Been there. Been there. A snake plant for the entryway, $90. <laughs> that also sounds very on par for we you. We do wow. own a snake plant. It's fake. <laughs> All right. I got a uh, credit card minimum payment for $400. Ouch. Mm-hmm. Homegirl this be spending. We'll keep going. Oh no! What Vet is it? Emergency, five hundred dollars. <gasps> that sounds on par too. <laughs> this literally happened the other day. Oh no! It was more than five hundred dollars. Wait, a vet emergency? Yeah. Everyone it's okay? okay, guys. Olive's doing okay, but that that really takes me down. Where I'm are you down at? to pennies, y'all. I'm down to twelve dollars. You're down to okay. 12. Let's we see where Can at. I put my Venmo out there? We all donate. <laughs> <laughs> Support your boy. Okay, I have child care for a thousand, so I I have eight hundred and seventy five left. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. I Keep going. Student loan payment three hundred dollars. <laughs> You're in the negative. George. I am now in negative two hundred and eighty eight dollars. <gasps> Wow. All right, Rachel, keep pulling until you hit a, a zero. Okay. Let's see if you do. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so I got a uh, therapy for 300 <laughs> That's very on par. On brand. Surprise traffic ticket in the mail because I rolled through a red light, $75. <sighs> and you still have money left? I still have money left. Uh, impulse target purchase, $100. Uh, wedding gift, $150. <laughs> Oh, shoot. I messed up my calculator. Taylor Swift tickets 900. I'm done. <laughs> About time. Yeah, I'm a I little negative. Fell asleep over it took here. me a little negative, but it's great. I mean, it's you great? still, <laughs> you I still were able to buy Taylor Swift tickets and, and a lot more. Oh, I was able to live a great life. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, George, and your high maintenance dogs over there really <laughs> took you out. Yeah, look at all my life, George. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so poor. Help me, I'm poor. I shouldn't have got the anthro candle. <laughs> this is not a lot. Like, right, it's mine's anyone? Mine mine's went anyone? like that. <laughs> she can't go in first class. Do you remember that Kristen Wig? Oh, Help yes. me, I'm poor. Hey there, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> it's your wow. new stove. He's like, no, it's Steve. What are you in a play? <laughs> It's the funniest movie. It Anyways, uh, I'm so poor. Not George. expecting a Courtney Kardashian impression and a Kristen Wiig impression I'm in so, one episode. I'm Y'all so are poor. blessed. <laughs> this is a free show. Let me remind you. <laughs> you get this for free. Okay. What did I learn? Oh my gosh, that was a lot, George. Okay, that so was a lot. I'm holding way less cards than you. You put them all back, but oh, I had sorry. probably yeah, this is basically all mine. I probably had about half the cards, maybe a little more than you did. Yeah, and I was going to T Swift. And you weren't. And you had some high expenses. Yeah, you had child you still care. Were doing child care. I was going to therapy. Car I was getting car tutoring loan. for my kids. Credit card, card payment. Loan. Yeah. And you're still making it. I know. So here's the deal. In real life, you know, there are some unexpected expenses. But for the most part, we can predict them. They're not forced upon you. You True. can choose. Like these were kind of forced upon us. Um, because it's not just necessarily a game of chance. Part of it is to a degree. But mostly we can control 
you know, some of our expenses and look to see, okay, what is it really worth? So yeah, that 175 uh, case it salary went a lot bad. further. Ain't bad. You still had a good life. Now here's what was interesting. It was kind of scary not knowing what expense was coming next. Yeah. But what's even scarier is that people feel that anxiety every day as they mm-hmm. live their life not doing a budget. Yes. Not knowing what's happening. And of course, emergencies are going to pop up. No one's like planning for that vet appointment this month right, for right. 500 bucks. But you can plan for the child care, right? If you're yes. choosing to do therapy or tutoring for your kids, all these things, like those kind of things you can 95% plan for. of those were plannable. Yes. Or choosing will. to say yes or no to, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where the budget comes into play. Where, yeah, you're predicting as much as possible. You're giving yourself a plan so you know what's coming for your income to go further and to actually know what to do with it. I mean, it is. it is. So you're not just like yes. getting thrown these things and like having to figure it out. It's already figured out for yeah, you. So this was a fun uh, no stakes game of chance for us because there yeah. were no stakes involved. But That's in right. real life, how you spend your money is not a game of chance. And you can avoid a lot of this anxiety uh, versus, you know, pulling random expenses from the deck. A lot of people live their life like that. Mm-hmm. They're just kind of floating through life not knowing what's going to happen next, hoping they have enough money to get through the next month. And so we always tell people, do a budget so that you have freedom and peace with your money instead of wondering where it's going, yeah. freaking out when that emergency hits. Have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. Yes. Get rid of your debt so that you have margin to cover all of this. Yes. That, it really does change everything. Yep. Yeah, and if you're making $175,000 a year and you feel like you're still holding a bunch of these like wild card expenses at the end of the month, like like I did, just know that you don't have to live like that. Like you can choose, because some of that felt so out of control, you can choose to say no to stuff, right? You can choose to live below your means and not have this feeling poor mentality because you feel that because you don't have, because like, just like my example, I went a little in the red after the Taylor Swift tickets so yeah, obviously you're going to feel stressed because you don't have any money left. But with that amount of income, you can say no to a lot of this, still have a great life, right? Cause you need some contentment in the midst of all of this. That's true. But to have that margin, it gives you a level of peace of mind that other things just, they won't bring you. And if your income is more like that 60K that I was trying to yep. live off of, this applies to you too. Yes, You're in sure. control of every single dollar coming in. You can work to increase your income through side hustles for a season as you pay off debt. And I do this example at our live events using our Every Dollar Budgeting app. And I show people someone who makes 70 grand household income on average brings home 4,800 bucks a month take-home pay. Yeah. There are a thousand bucks in the hole every month. And I show them with some simple sacrifices how that can turn into 2000 positive every month. Oh, wow. A $3,000 swing by making some sacrifices, getting out of debt, freeing up those payments. And it's so eye-opening to go like, oh, that's someone making 70. Mm-hmm. Imagine making double that and still feeling like, I don't know, Rachel, I don't have any money Where's left. What's going? Oh, my gosh. So in the future, before any of us complain about feeling poor, uh, let's just promise that we're going to take a second and, you know, look at the big picture, make a list of five things that you're grateful for that you can actually afford, right? So if you start to feel that tension, actually see what can I afford that I'm thankful that that's what my income's going to, and make a list of five non-material things that you're grateful for. So things that don't have a price tag to them. Winston Cruz. Because that- <laughs> He's on my list. I don't I hope he's on yours. He's on your list. He's on my list too. No, but really I'm like, it's it's the things in life that can't be taken away that I've realized is like, that's where your time and energy need to go. We spend so much time and energy and money mm-hmm. trying to like get all this stuff, live this certain life. So it's, it's exhausting. It's not, it is not where true, I don't think, joy and peace comes from. So that's really good. Thank you. And you have a the contentment journal, which walks us through all this, yes. which is so great. Yeah, but 90 days to contentment. I know yeah. it, sound, it sounds hokey at first when you're like, Write down things you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. When you really think about it, if you can cover food, utilities, basic housing, and transportation, you are incredibly blessed. Yep. If you have your health and you have family and people that you love in your life, you're incredibly blessed. That's right. And so once you do that, you're like, I don't need all this stuff. I don't need to go out again. I don't need to – yes, I'll miss out on the Taylor Swift concert, and I'm jealous because Rachel went to two and I've been to zero. (laughs) But I still have a great life. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for that reminder, Rachel. So good, George. I'm grateful for you. Oh, you're on my list. I never George, say it. George Camel, Georgie. I only say it when we're live on this podcast so I can get brownie points. <laughs> it only worked. here. It's a friendship. It friendship worked. that goes years, y'all. It's friendship. a transactional friendship. <laughs> get you one. <laughs> only on here. All right. Well, it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with... Guilty, guilty as charged. charged. And that's where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question 
every week. And if we were guilty, we take a sip. Do you ever get nervous about these? Some of them, I'm always like, oh my gosh, can I remember something? I don't know. No, it's pressure, but it's fine. Okay. It's a mix of vulnerability and memory. I appreciate you guys opening up your hearts to us. Thank you. <laughs> um, I really do. Um, have you ever downplayed your wealth to fit in with a group? Oh, uh, downplay my wealth. Like how much you make? We'll just say, you know what I mean? Like, have you ever like done something where you're like, ooh, to fit in with a group? That's a fun question. Especially as like working in the money industry, you know? Like you guys being yeah. money experts, you know, do you feel that? Like you ever? I'll say this, not as much about the income, but our house situation when we built and moved in in 19 and like other people like that we got to know that didn't know us before the house would like make... Like kind of just not not rude comments, but stuff about like they knew like if they found out that we paid cash for it, like that's a very I understand like that's a very very rare thing, and I'm very aware of that. So like if anything gets brought up about a mortgage or something, I don't really say anything. Oh, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like I never you're not put gonna in, lie and be like, oh, I never yeah, put that my two cents. So that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like, like I down people play. and friends. And stuff. Yes, yes, yes. I get a little bit insecure in a sense where I'm like, oh gosh. You don't want to be the person that's like, this is how you do it. Well, also, yeah. it's partially and because like, way like, right. yeah. you're modest. You're not trying to like flaunt. You know what I mean? No, yeah. That's not your personality. No, but uh, but I downplay that, I would say, probably the most. I feel like I'm the same way on a much you know lower scale, but I don't bring <laughs> it up a lot with my friends. You know, like I, we, we both drive a Tesla. Mine is very old and I'm very, like I scrimped and saved to pay for it and I waited till our house was paid off to buy it. And it's like an old, te- like almost anybody else. So do you feel there, like he's justifying this right here? I'm explaining why. Like it sounds like I have a Tesla. It's really old and it's terrible. But you know what I, I mean? Just, like and I did it Tesla drivers can be pompous and obnoxious and ostentatious. Yes. You're the exception, Rachel. <laughs> oh my God. They're I feel known like Mercedes people worst. are much more obnoxious. <laughs> sure. All luxury car drivers can be obnoxious. <laughs> okay. But Tesla's I just, like mid-range when you say that, like, people put you people, in a box in their mind. People, people like, people that drive Teslas to me, I'm like, you're economical. Economical? I mean, don't know that I think They plug that in range. their cars. <laughs> they plug in their cars. No. There is a base model of, thir- of it being $30,000. I will say I never judge any of you who drive a Tesla, but I don't think I would say, you're just so economical. Well, you don't have to pay for gas. It's That's economical. That's I'm thinking. I'm thinking you're saving yes. money. But we were all thinking, this is a very expensive vehicle. <laughs> okay, wasn't the base Tesla 30000 though? That's true. It is- Which- Again, sure. is I get it's not a it's not a six thousand yeah. dollar car, right? That's fair, but it's not a ninety thousand. Like no, Tesla just feels luxury, just because it's like you know what so I mean. Funny it feels me, very y'all. sleek and like sure, you know what I mean, compared to like a Honda Accord. Well, of course, yes, but to me, I think I, I there's like a whole other echelon of way nicer cars than a Tesla in my head. Um, yeah. No, they're not Ferraris. No, no. I mean, like, she's <laughs> Lamborghinis. She has a point. The Lambos. <laughs> I didn't know where else to go. I just went there because I was like, like a that's Mercedes, a, big a BMW are nicer cars to me than a Tesla. Good yes, to know. Ma'am. Don't you think? <laughs> I, can I I'm get a vote in the room? The a ring. Mercedes or a BMW is nicer than a Tesla? No. No. What? It just depends. <laughs> oh, no. It just depends. I. It depends I don't on know. The range. Okay, a Range Rover, nicer than a Tesla. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the Range Rover, but a Mercedes. Oh, I look at a Mercedes and I think that's way nicer than a I Tesla. Th- I see them as the same. Well, there's Mercedes you that are do? cheaper than a Tesla. There's Mercedes that are yeah. way more expensive see, than a Tesla. I put Beamer, Mercedes, even Lexus. Lamborghinis. Oh my God, Lambos. Lambos. <laughs> Ferraris. <laughs> I'm learning so much today. That, and I put a Tesla in like a, I put it in the echelon below that. Like in my head, that's why I'm like, it's okay. not like you're right. There's nothing next wrong. Time, this is just opinion. Next no. time I tell people I drive a Tesla, I'm gonna say, I'm just economical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yes. Well, I cannot believe y'all think Tesla and BMW are at the same level. Like let's like ask a, the people what they think. Let us know. I would be so curious because in my head, it's not at all. That's fair. What do you think? What? If you see a BMW, a nice BMW, do you really think that your car is as nice as them? Because no. I think their car is way nicer. Mine isn't. No, but when you just think of Tesla, do you think— I think Tesla is—it's not technically a luxury brand, but it is a luxury car. That's how I'm going to say it. Okay. Uh, Wow. Food for thought. (laughs) (laughs) I can get there. Think about it. Get back to me. I just don't—yeah. I—it's so—I don't know. Yeah, no, I think there's way nicer cars than Tesla's in my head. How? Rachel's car sucks. What were the hands that were raised? (laughs) 
When you saw it earlier, when you oh, asked the crew. A lot of people thought that a Tesla was as nice or nicer than a, yeah, than the BMW or Mercedes, which. They did majority yes, back here. Which I, I guess I'm like. Wow. Shoot, I don't want to be that person. Hey, let's it might be because you guys have I'm the only one that's like, in like, I don't want to be that person, but I am. Oh, dear God. This might be the <laughs> first time. <laughs> no, Rachel. No shame. This is the first time in history Rachel's been out of touch, y'all. Y'all. I just, I <laughs> oh, my gosh. If a Mercedes pulls up next to me tonight, I'm still going to say, you got a nicer car than me. I still believe that in all my heart. I say you do. You should just keep going with that. This is a great argument. <laughs> but when you or you pass me in my Toyota, I'm like, they have a nicer car. I love okay, a my Toyota. My Odyssey, great car. That's a sick car. I love my Toyota. They last. But I'm just saying. And that's what I think when I'm in my Honda as I'm looking at. A new Odyssey is more than a new Model 3 Tesla. Um, so technically, the Honda Odyssey. That's true. Just saying. Ooh. Wow, it's a great pound point. for pound. Mm. The Odyssey is nicer than a Tesla. See, y'all. Thank you, George. Really, coming you're to my welcome, rescue. Rachel. Really coming to my rescue. But back to your question. Uh, downplay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't consider myself like I'm still so frugal that like my life has not changed that much. You know what I mean? But do are you quieter? Like Rachel was saying, like you're just like, not. You're gonna withhold. Your George, we paid off your house though. Yeah. And y'all didn't have a mortgage, right? Yes. Like, and if someone started like talking about their mortgage like friend oh, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't come in and be like never be like well <laughs> we don't have a mortgage that's I, right that's uh, right, right, right but if relate. they were like george would you feel like oh man yeah i would consider that what if they asked you like if, if a friend was if like a if it's a hey, true friend know, they asked me i'll tell them like my yeah. my make something up my car loan is this well you don't have if one Lindsay and jordan like, are over and they want to talk money i'll i'll talk but not me i'm talking about somebody else rachel like if they so had, the answer is yes You've downplayed the it. The answer yes. is yes, but only out of down- modesty. Well, it doesn't matter why, but have you downplayed it? Because I don't want to make anyone feel like Agreed. shame. Well, that's the you know? same. <sighs> just like Just I didn't mean to make Rachel feel bad about I love Tesla. how wound up Rachel is over this. I think we need to save up and get you a Mercedes. <laughs> get Rachel a Mercedes. Get me a Mercedes. We need to start a GoFundMe to get Rachel a Mercedes because her <laughs> economical car is not cutting it. <laughs> Driving that trash around town? Get out of here. Oh, shoot. Oh, Lord. All right. That was too much fun. That was tough. That was tough. Okay. So, who finished their drink first? George did. Well done, George. I got a lot closer to the lard. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What would you... (laughs) Wish I was joking. What would you rate it? I'm going to give this an 11 out of 10. (gasps) I've never done that. Lindsay. (gasps) 11 out of 10. Oh, my gosh. Cue the confetti. You've redeemed yourself. Lindsay. Yay! Great yeah, I, you had a negative score on one. Oh, believe so th- me, I know. The- I, I thought it tasted like dirt. Yeah. So this is. <laughs> Sorry to the person who invented it. It could have been me. <laughs> it was good. I don't know. Since it's not written on my sheet, will you tell us what's in it? <laughs> I am so sorry. No, you're you're the producer. Sparkling you water. made it. I feel okay, like you actually, it. how about you guess? This would be funny. Okay, I got it. Sparkling water, mint, lemon. Yes. That's what I got. Okay, what about you? <laughs> Anything you want to add? Those are right. Well, I, I saw the ingredients out there. Well, then what so is then it? So then why aren't you doing this? <laughs> well, additional, there is fresh mint. Fresh mint. Okay. Lard. <laughs> lemon curd. Oh, it's not lard. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I'm not sticking Crisco and just stirring that in my head. I was like, there. I saw it and I was like, they put lard in this. There's lemon okay, lard. Okay, I'm taking oh back lard. over. I'm taking back over. We Restart. Have simple syrup, oh lemon curd, lemon juice, mint leaves, and seltzer water. Ah, uh, lemon curd. How much do you think this is? Over four dollars or under four dollars? I think the lemon curd alone has got to be a few bucks. So I'm going to say two seventy five. Wow, I'm going to go three fifteen. You're closer, Georgie. $1.60 a glass. <gasps> wow, that's what? way less expensive than I was expecting. That's crazy. It's I really know, good. and it's tasty. It's really if good. If you serve this at a party, your guests will never leave. Yep. They are, they're gonna love it, y'all. That's so good. Yeah. What was your rating? Oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 10 out of 10. Wow. Woo! It was delicious. It was delicious. Thank you. Lindsay. If you all don't go make this at home this weekend, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. We gave you a home run drink. So and it's good. a mocktail. It's Which delicious. the mocktail lovers, we meet them. They're like, so thankful y'all do mocktails. I know, and it's so good. This is how you say thank you. Go make it. 
that was fun. So you can get the recipe in the show notes if you want to give it a try this weekend. So if you guys will leave a review, hit that subscribe button, do all the things to help the algorithm because we want to get the show in front of more people so they know that money can be fun. It can be enjoyable and you can take control of it. So make sure to check out us next Thursday on an all new episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. Happy Hour.